Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, four minutes after 11 o'clock. Beautiful Friday morning. Hope you're doing well. Let's see, Robin. 17 days into the new year. Yep. 18 days ago, I had my mind made up. Okay, this year, I'm going to do something about filling the bike. I'm going to be cleaner. I'm going to be leaner. Oh, the leaner part. Oh, that's right. I was going to be leaner, wasn't I? There you go. Well, you know what happens? People bring in donuts, you know? People, yeah. People bring in, and they're nice, and, and they're sitting there, and they're, they're, they've got, like, these neon lights on them that say, come and eat me, Larry, and I, I, and I go over there. I know. They, they talk and everything. <laughs> I mean, gosh, I've got that same problem. It's, fu- it's funny. The, the donuts and things that people bring in literally can call me all the way from the room outside the studio, yeah. over, way back to where our office is. <laughs> it's amazing how loud those things can scream. I know. Uh, Lisa Lynn is on the phone. She's been with us before, and she's going to put some sense into my mind. I'm going to get back into that lean commitment I made 18, 18 days ago. Uh, she is a certified fitness trainer, and she's in great shape herself. Uh, she's a specialist in performance, nutrition, and fitness therapy, a metabolic researcher, and uh, the, a fitness expert often seen on Dr. Oz's program. Uh, we're going to talk about the top three bad nutrition habits and how to eliminate them from your diet with a healthy habit replacement. So those donuts will be replaced by celery? What do you think? Oranges. You, uh, oranges. There you go. You've got some nice looking oranges, too, in, this, in our you. office. Uh, Lisa Lynn. Good morning, Lisa. Good to have you on the show again. Good morning. Thanks for having me, and I love your new lean goal. Well, you wouldn't love how <laughs> how well I'm doing it, though. <laughs> I'm here to help you today because you know there was just a study uh, recently published in the in the Journal of Clinical Psychology that said you have to be specific. Like you said, I want to be lean. Right. How how are you going to get there? And that you should bundle them together, which kind of makes sense. So you're going to get lean because you're not going to eat those yucky donuts anymore. How do I how do I convince myself that they're yucky? They don't look yucky. No, they I taste great. I say you talk back to those things, <laughs> by the way. And the minute you look at them, like you know how we all get that little like I get this little tiny ab fat this time of year, and I like literally you're feeding that stuff. So every time you look at that donut, look at that part of your body you want to change and go like, do I want to feed this or do I want it to go? And and be funny. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I have no choice. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I kind of did the same thing with cigars. I quit cigars, and I told myself, right. do I, because I was always afraid, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get cancer of the mouth or yeah. the throat, and I'm not yep. going to die. I'm just going to lose everything I use to earn a living, which is talking. Yeah. You and you're going to suffer slowly and painfully, which, by the way, our first knockout tip of the new year, this is for you, Larry. Knock out sugar, and I say energy drinks. Put them together because if you say, like with the cigars, I'm not going to do that. And I mean, make a big goal. Like get, get rid of excited. them. Yeah, get rid of them. And then that means you're going to have to find replacements. But I say to replace those energy drinks that pep us up. Like you might be craving that donut because you're lacking energy. It's the truth. You think? You think? I'm pretty well, energetic. Most people. Yeah, most <laughs> are you all the time, but if you really sat still for a minute, like men don't usually know how tired they are, and went, God, I'm tired. That's usually when our resolve is down. So put an omega-3 next to the donut bin, and, and I say take it instead of. It's like you're replacing the behavior. An omega-3. But, okay. Yeah. Now, wh- I'll tell you, these are miracle workers. There's Everybody on the planet, including your dog, should be on omega-3 because it helps balance blood sugar which will keep you out of the donut bin. It helps um, regulate your mood a little bit, ease inflammation, and here's why I like to use it. It makes you feel full when you take it because it's a good fat. Are we talking about a pill? Yeah. Oh, and, okay. And you, you got to make sure in that pill that you have enough DHA and EPA that there's at least 500 of each in order to get the really good benefits you want to see from an omega-3. Okay, so omega-3 wouldn't be in fish. Would I mean, you're not saying to put a it piece is. of fish. Oh, okay. So, so it co- is. But I wouldn't, it wouldn't be practical to put a piece of fish no. next to the donuts. And to be honest, the more I learn about omega-3s, right. I would say even if you eat the fish, you got to take the omega-3s because our diet, those donuts, are pushing our omega-3 levels down and jacking up the bad levels. And so it's best to supplement with it. 
All right, so I'm going to put some omega-3 pills next to the yes. donuts. <laughs> yes, which, which takes care of number two, knock out the sugar and eat the beans. We're going to talk about the beans. That All right, the beans. The okay. beans. Okay. Is, it, is, this well, a, is this a white bean extract? Yes. Okay. And you know why? If people take this stuff in the morning, you're not going to crave. You know, you got to look for the face, too. It has that 1,000 milligrams of the white kidney bean extract in a high quality. It keeps your blood sugar level. So I honestly, I take my supplements probably at the same time that donut calls you. I remember uh, not just the last time, but several times you've been on, you've mentioned the white bean extract. And I've, I can't tell you how many people would call or send email asking me, what did she say? White beans? White beans? Yeah. 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 So I, I actually have the note taped to my desk right now so that when people call later on, I'll be able to tell them. And you know what the truth is, though? Like, one of the reasons it's constantly a replay is not only, you know, people run out to the store, but they don't buy phase two, and so they don't get the proper amount. Same with the omega-3. If you don't have enough of that stuff in there, it's not going to do its job. But I have a lot of people who struggle with cravings, and I'll say, you taking your white kidney bean extract? And they're like, oh, no. And they get back on, and next thing you know, they can fight with the donuts a little bit better. And now what about the natural sugars? I mean, there's this movement from the U.S. government. They're, they're trying to tell people, don't drink orange juice anymore. If you're going to drink orange juice, you got to cut it with water because the sugar and the natural oranges aren't good for you anymore. What do you think about that? I, ag- I agree. I don't think people, if we eat the right amount of fruit, have an issue with it. But here's the problem. Remember back in the day, they had those little tiny juice glasses. It looks like a shot glass to us. Oh, yeah. Right, right. That's how big our juice is supposed to be in the morning. Uh Uh-huh. And that makes sense. And I actually take people completely off juice because we're so out of whack. Sugar is in everything from salad dressings to tomato sauce. I mean, it's everywhere. It's in our creamers that we put in our coffee. And that's why we have these big fat midsections, even on skinny people. So I say cut out all that sugar, including juice, but eat the orange instead. All right. Oh, okay, I like it. All right, so the omega-3. Yeah, the omega-3. The white bean extract, and the, wasn't there a third one you were going to mention? And then the third one that you want to do is start to, believe it or not, do you know the average American eats 29 pounds of French fries a year? I believe that, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. admit to it, but I definitely reach off my kids' plate. <laughs> they feel so much better off his. But if you can replace them, and we actually do this tip with like a green bean with a vegetable, it's a hand-to-mouth finger food, and usually it's about eating with our hands when we're eating french fries. And after time, you'll realize, like roast them, put a little good sea salt on it and enjoy it, that it's really about the hand-to-mouth eating while we're moving versus what's underneath our fingers. Yeah, some restaurants yeah. serve them now. They're, they're serving, like, but, but they're deep fried. That's, it's almost like defeating the purpose, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I'll literally take the really good ones home, and I'll roast them with sea salt, and they're actually very, my son calls them green french fries. Oh. That sounds good. So you're okay with salt, then? (laughs) Well, you know what? Shockingly for him, I will put some sea salt or stuff that has some good minerals in it, and I find that if I roast him and sea salt him and I have him out waiting, he'll, like, randomly walk around and pull them off and eat them, like, when you have bad food. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. This, this, yeah. This, so, so Robin has in the office right now bananas and oranges. Nice yes. looking oranges. Yeah. A little sweet tooth there, huh, Robin? Like me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I gotta have that sugar. <laughs> but let me. But but, see, but see. But see, we got donuts in one room, oranges in the other. Wouldn't the, the oranges be the better <laughs> the better out. choice? <laughs> well, shockingly, to your body, it doesn't care whether that sugar came from an orange, banana, yeah. or a donut when All it comes right. to elevating well, blood sugar. Wow. <laughs> There you go. To, and I'm not telling you to eat the donut, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. Yeah. I would say the same. She said eat the donut. But the truth <laughs> is, it would be best if you replace those with a vegetable because here's what will happen. Vegetable. You'll put your sweet tooth to rest where that fruit wakes it up even more. Oh, wow. More vegetable. An apple, would that be okay? It's kind of a you compromise. Know, an apple is actually one that I suggest people do because there's a little bit more fiber, and an apple actually has an ingredient in it that actually shuts off your hunger hormone. So bananas are taboo. Like, I don't suggest them ever unless you want to gain weight. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Well, I just ate the sorry. last one. So <laughs> oh, you I ate the last one. You. All right, good, good. I saved you. Uh, all right, Lisa, you're always fun to have on the air with us. And uh, before we say goodbye, do you want to leave us with your uh, website? Absolutely. Linfit.com. And if anybody has questions, send them over. And is it one N? 
Yes, one N. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, L Y N F I T dot com. And actually, Robin makes it really easy. Just go to our website, WOCA dot com. Look at the guest list. You'll see Lisa's name at eleven oh five today, and the website is right there. And the book. What's you have a book, right? Oh, by the way, I was just writing the metabolism solution. Next time we speak, it should be done, and I'll have fifty other ways that you can satisfy your sweet tooth and get lean at the same time. And and, and is the exercise part of that metabolism? I know that's something oh, you're. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I was just writing on why, why being lean matters about revving your metabolism. And if you want, you can go on my blog right now. There's a, a detox diet. Everybody's rebooting from the new year. So, like, you guys should go look at it. It throws greens in your shake, drinking green tea. It, it, it reboots that sweet tooth, which I always have to do. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Lisa, you're always fun to have on the air with us. Thank you for being uh, with us as you are. And uh, you're always welcome back. Go to linfit.com, L Y N F I T.com. Lisa Lynn. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I love you guys. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. We'll be Bye-bye. right back. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Nothing is cooler than jazz. Unless, of course, it's jazz for a good cause. The usual suspects will be performing a jazz, swing, Latin, and blues dinner dance at the Silver Spring Shores Presbyterian Church at 674 Silver Road on Saturday, January 18th from 6 until 9 p.m. For only $25, you'll enjoy the four-piece jazz combo called The Usual Suspects while dining and dancing and supporting the church ministries. To make reservations, call 687-1119, The Usual Suspects. Now that is cool. Look who just walked in the room, Joel Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joel, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joel, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Trauma care centers save thousands of Florida lives. But Shands UF wants to close Ocala Regional's trauma center. An out-of-town hospital that receives millions in taxpayer money is suing to shut down Ocala's trauma center. They want to pull the plug on life-saving trauma care all over Florida. Don't let them get away with it. Trauma care increases the chance of survival and traumatic injuries by 25%. 25%. That's right. But only two in five Floridians have the access to trauma care they need. And that's not even close to good enough. We don't need less access to trauma care. We need more. It's time for Shands UF to stop putting profits ahead of patients. Stop playing political games. Visit SaveOurTraumaCenters.org to find out how you can help keep Ocala's Trauma Center open and protect life-saving trauma care. Save more lives. Save our trauma centers. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association. That is one sound no one likes to hear, but if it happens, know that it will be reported in seconds to the right authorities. AA Lock, Dock, and Security is your company for your home and your business. AA Lock, Dock, and Security, where you can get that extra key made or have your lock rekeyed. Questions to protect your home and business? Call 352-867-1965. Or stop by AA Lock, Dock, and Security at their new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street here in Ocala. Remember, be proactive, not reacting after it happens. Call 352-867-1965. 352-867-1965.
That is one sound no one likes to hear, but if it happens, know that it will be reported in seconds to the right authorities. AA Lock Dock and Security is your company for your home and your business. AA Lock Dock and Security, where you can get that extra key made or have your lock rekeyed. Questions to protect your home and business? Call 352-867-1965 or stop by AA Lock Dock and Security at their new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street here in Ocala. Remember, be proactive, not reacting after it happens. Call 352-867-1965. 352-867-1965. Trauma care centers save thousands of Florida lives. But Shands UF wants to close Ocala Regional's trauma center. An out-of-town hospital that receives millions in taxpayer money is suing to shut down Ocala's trauma center. They want to pull the plug on life-saving trauma care all over Florida. Don't let them get away with it. Trauma care increases the chance of survival and traumatic injuries by 25%. 25%. That's right. But only two in five Floridians have the access to trauma care they need. And that's not even close to good enough. We don't need less access to trauma care. We need more. It's time for Shans UF to stop putting profits ahead of patients. Stop playing political games. Visit SaveOurTraumaCenters.org to find out how you can help keep Ocala's Trauma Center open and protect life-saving trauma care. Save more lives. Save our trauma centers. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. We've had uh, in the past Carl Brookens as our guest, and he's on the phone again. He has uh, created a character that uh, many of you have fallen in love with, and uh he, uh, the, the new book is, and that's Sean Sean. It's a Sean Sean mystery novel. Sean Sean. I yes. like that. Uh, he has no middle initial. The Case of the Purloined Painting is the, is the new book by Carl Brookens, who also happens to be a talented photographer and a book reviewer and a public TV program director. And I remember asking him once about the boat he's driving in his publicity photo. He said he rented it. <laughs> Let's see if I remember right. Let's see if I remember that right. And uh, let me push this button so we can hear him. Good morning, Carl. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing very well. It's sunny and it's bright. And, of course, to give you a little bump, it's only two degrees above zero up here. And where are you? I'm in Minnesota. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. So you can't be out on the boat today? No, definitely not on the boat today. (laughs) If we were, we'd be in an icebreaker or we'd be... uh, just stuck in the ice. <laughs> yeah, like the, the ship in, in the Antarctic. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. This is exciting. We, when you are finished with a book, yeah. and uh, how do I ask this? I, w- I want to see how you what happens for you as a writer. Do, I mean, do you get bugged by the character, so to speak? I mean, is the, are you thinking always, oh, here's the next thing? Or do you think, what's going to happen next? Is, is it hard to think of next, or does it happen naturally? Well, like there's a there is a when, when any book is finished, I get a little period of depression, thinking I'm saying goodbye to some of the characters. Uh-huh. But, because, but because I'm writing a series, I'm not saying goodbye to, to the most intriguing characters. In this case, Sean Sean and his very tall girlfriend, and so that um, that alleviates that problem. But I usually have a two or three other possibilities for for him. Oh, really? Uh, as possible cases that are either I've got a couple notes someplace, maybe in the computer or in, in one of my recordings, or, you know, something. So, so I, I'm usually looking at, at several possibilities. Uh, oh, really? So it yeah, it isn't as if I have to wait and, and wonder if I'm going to have another plot. Oh, my goodness, no, I have enough plot ideas to keep going until the day they take haul my cold, hard hands away from the keyboard. And, and you reminded me of two well-known people, Jerry Seinfeld and Woody Allen. Not that they're the only ones, but they're the ones I heard recently in interviews uh, saying to an interviewer that they have little pieces of paper or notebooks or, or whatever they use to, when an idea strikes and they write it down, tuck it away, and, and maybe come back to it or maybe not. I do that, and it's only I do it electronically. I have a little tiny recorder that I now carry with me. Ah. It, used to be, it used to be that's exactly what I could do. I could be driving someplace, and I could, and I could something would happen, I would say, boy, there's a setting that I could use. And I would go home, and I could make a note, but, I can't, but because of my advancing age, <clears throat> I'm, my memory is <laughs> sharp as it used to be. So, I'm, um, uh, so now what I do is I have this little tiny hand recorder and that I can record, and then I can put it in the computer or on a piece of paper. We have such a short interview with you today. I don't want to steal time away from what we should be talking about, which is the book right. in hand today. So let's talk about that, Carl. The case okay. of the purloin painting. What's this about? 
Well, it, it came from two sources. One of which, one of which was a book I read a long time ago called the called the Monument Men about uh, World War II and how the U.S. government put together a special unit along with the Brits to uh, try to protect cultural icons in uh, in Europe as we approached uh, uh, D-Day. Uh, they wa- they wanted to avoid bombing places that couldn't be moved or to get advance warning to the resistance to move important artworks out of the way. And we did that very successfully, all right? And, in fact, there, it's so successfully that, that George Clooney's now in, engaged in a movie. Right, <laughs> <that, laughs> right. Guess what? It's called The Monument, Monuments. Right, right. Now, I haven't seen it, but the book is fascinating. All right, so I read this. Now, I'm uh, fast forward several years, and I'm reading the newspaper reports of our, of our military's entrance into Baghdad and the fact that because we had no pre- plan uh, for what to do about protecting Baghdad, uh, the big, some of the big museums in Baghdad were looted, and people ran off with priceless, one-of-a-kind artifacts from, that are really, really old, and a great many of them have not yet been, re- been found or been, been returned. Oh, wow. And that's tragic. See, that's a real tragedy. So out of that... Uh, I began to think about that, that and, and I know that in World War II, a lot of uh, a lot of people brought. Well, it started with the Nazis. Okay, yes. they confiscated all kinds of things, including right down to the wallpaper on in some of the homes that they looted. No, nobody knows why. They wow. Them, but but I mean that's bizarre. But they did. They took furniture. They took rugs. And of course they took all the artworks. Now a lot of the artworks have been returned, but many of them haven't. And in some areas. In the case of my story, which is totally fictitious, okay, but th- that's what it's based on. It's based on those kind of events. And what happens is that at the end of World War II, on the Polish-Russian border, which went back and forth by a few miles a, a good deal of the time, and, and the Nazis were in charge, a German unit was in charge, which is separate from the, from the Nazis, of course. Uh, the, the Americans were in charge, the Russians were in charge. All right, several villages were basically obliterated. So a GI unit that's over there, very briefly, a GI in the unit uh, is, is wandering through the rubble, finds a painting lying under some rubble, takes it out of its frame, rolls it up, puts it in his bag, brings it home. That's back in 1946. Now he takes the painting and he discovers it's worth a little bit of money. It's by a minor Polish painter. And he uses it to float a loan. The loan results in their buying a machine shop. The machine shop becomes bigger, becomes a big manufacturing operation. Huh. Now, in our present time, this this uh, this stolen, basically stolen work. But he thought the the people were all gone, dead, moved, whatever, and most. Yeah, of them right, right. So in you know in and what they tell you as a as a mystery writer or a crime crime novel writer is that you get one major coincidence in each book (laughs) get away with now so here's the major coincidence the guy takes the painting comes back to minneapolis he's building this up 1955 the the former owner of that painting survives one of the death camps goes back to his house packs up a lot of his stuff and in the rubble because the house was before it was destroyed was the home of uh, of a nazi uh general or not a general, but a major, a major military figure. He finds a notebook because the Germans were meticulous about keeping track of things. He finds a notebook of everything that was stolen, that was that was taken from that village and from villages around it, to back to Berlin. So he takes this notebook. He doesn't know really what it is. He throws it in all his stuff. He he, he comes to America, and where does he emigrate to? Of course, Minneapolis. Ah. That's coincidence. Now he doesn't know that his painting, of course, is in Minneapolis. Until one day, when the the now we're in like in a second generation of this family, and they're reading about the repatriation of stolen artworks, and they say, "Well, we really own this thing. We better we better uh, repatriate." They take it to a local art museum. The guy learns about it, as do a lot of other people, and they're in. And uh, the people, uh, some very bad people, have just determined that this notebook uh, contains a lot of crucial information about uh, Nazis who so far have escaped escaped detection. And oh, so wow. So they're going after the guy, and they're going after the notebook. And the story opens with the death of this emigrant. After all he's gone through, 
He's killed in Minneapolis because he refuses to give up the notebook. Oh, wow. You've got us wanting to read this one for sure. Fascinating and it, story. So, so, and then it gets really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, we don't want to tell too much, but that, wow, what a great job you did to helping us to understand this book. Um, Carl Brookins is who you're listening to. He's the author of the book he was describing. It is called The Case of the Purloined Painting. It is a Sean Sean mystery for those who've already been following Carl. Um, how, what, how many books have you written so far? Uh, this would be the twelfth novel that's out in print. And are they all Sean Sean books? No, uh, no, no. I uh, I started writing uh, a sailing series because my wife and I have been sailors for many many years. So uh, we and we sail all over the world as recreational sailors. And I started out writing adventure series in which a couple, very much like my wife and I, get into all kinds of trouble that, that uh, she and I never had. <laughs> isn't it, it's, it's romantic, isn't it, to think of being a, you're an author and a sailor. Those two things seem to go together well. <laughs> well, it worked, it, it worked out pretty well. So I wrote a sailing series, and then because I worked in the world of academia, and if you know anything about the world of higher education, you know that it attracts some very strange people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I concur with that one. <laughs> uh, I have a copy of Carl's book. I'd like to give it away the rest of us have to go buy it so if you want the free one i have give me a call at 622-9622-622 woca the woca climate control source hotline let me give this one away carl real quickly and then we'll get your information so we can give uh get so we can go buy the book good morning you're on the air you've got the book who's this hey this is charles charles you got it <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Know where you're at. All right, thank you. We'll be. It'll be waiting for you here. Uh, and and Carl, are you ever in Central Florida? You ever? I'd love to have you in the studio with us. I do occasionally get down to Florida. We have we have friends in, in uh, I think south of you, about uh, hundred miles. Okay. And we've been talking about going to, about visiting. I don't know exactly when, but but I will certainly keep that in mind. And if we do come down there, why well, I'd be happy to drop in and. And talk to you guys face to face. Oh, that'd be that'd be wonderful. And we we have moved. Of course, you didn't know our old studio either, but our new studio is in the local mall, the Paddock Mall. Ah, well, I think I see. Do I see Robin? Oh, yes, you do. If you're watching the TV, <laughs> the, yeah. The, if you're watching the streaming thing, you see Robin. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I am watching the stream. It's delayed a little, but I can tell that I, I thought. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Robin. Yeah, I'll, Hi. I'll put my hand up there somewhere. Where, where is it? Oh, oh, there's my hand. There's my hand. <laughs> there's my hand. Hi, Carl. There you are. <laughs> and and let me just take this quick opportunity to say, if you have people who want more, <laughs> I see the hand. If you want more opportunities to yes, goodbye. If you want more opportunities to read about my books, www. CarlBrookins.com on the internet. All right, CarlBrookins.com. Uh, always fun hey, to have. I really, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been fun. All right, and if you're looking at your monitor right now, I just put a cowboy hat on Robin. She didn't even know I did. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's a virtual cowboy. It's a hat. lot of fun. <laughs> All right, well, you are you are a great guest, Carl. Always, uh, thank you for coming on the air and talk about your wonderful books. And definitely, if you're in the area, uh, be a guest in our studio. And and I promise it'll be more than a ten minute interview. Yes. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day and a great week. Thank you, Carl. Carl. You too. Stay warm. We'll take a little break and we'll be right back. The Huckabee Report is brought to you by Dairy Queen, Silver Springs, Ocala. Howdy. RL here to tell you about a great deal at Dairy Queen. For only $4.49, you can warm up to a hot, juicy combo of either a foot-long, quarter-pound all-beef chili dog or a tasty, home-style cheeseburger. Smoking hot off the char grill. Both get fries and a drink. You can add a Sunday for only 99 cents. Now that's a doggone good deal at 